Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the ISDT D2 Dual Charger and it's going to replace my good old Tordigy reactor that doesn't have a built-in power supply like the ISDT D2 so I'm using this computer power supply although it does the trick it's bulky and I've been using it for almost a year and a half so far I was very happy but it's time for an upgrade. Inside the box first thing we noticed is the charger and it's quite big to tell you the truth but you have to remember it has a built-in power supply so all you have to do is just connect it to your power outlet and it's going to work the operating voltage range is between 100 to 240 volts which means you can use it all around the world the dimensions of the charger are 120 by 108 by 70 millimeters and it weighs 510 grams so as I said earlier it's not a small charger in the center of the charger we have a 2.4 320 by 240 screen this is not a touch screen all the operations are done with this rotating dial we have here one and two buttons that allows us to control the modules on the left side we've got a USB port that provides 2 amperes and 5 volts and we have also this jack that allows it to connect the computer and upgrade the built-in firmware on the back we have the power connector and on the front we have two XT60 connectors and two ballast connectors for each port. In addition to the charger and the instruction manual we also get in this AC cable. Once you connect the AC cable it immediately turns on, you, can, you could hear also the fan is quite noisy and then you can select between the left module which is module 1 and once you press 2 it will move to module 2. So you can select 1 and two. If you long press the number, you can set the task, charge, discharge, or storage. You can choose the battery type. You can choose LIHV, LiPo, Lylon, Life, PB, NIMH, or CD. So the battery type is pretty wide and supports probably all the batteries that you're going to need. You can set also the cell voltage between 4.15 to 4.25 volts. This is the end volt per cell. Cell count, you can charge between 1S to 6S battery and you can change the current settings between 0.1 amperes all the way up to 12 amperes. Normally I charge my batteries on 1C which means if my battery is 1300 milliamperes I'm using 1.3 amperes. Then you can start the task by pressing here start task and it asks you if you want to perform it without the balancer for a forest battery and I'm not going to do it especially because there is no battery attached so after you long press the number you can see here we have channel 1 setting and if you long press the 2 you can see here channel 2 task setting so each module has different settings which means you can use for example the right module to charge an LAHV battery and the left one to charge a LiPo battery accessing the general settings menu is done by pressing this dial and then you can set the backlight between low, middle or high you can set the volume between off, low, middle and high completion tone which means once the battery charging will be finished you can either just play sound once or can repeat it and then it will prompt you to come over and get the battery out of this charger because leaving it for too long is not healthy and can burn your house. No, maybe I'm exaggerating, not burn your house, but don't leave the battery connected to the charger. So I recommend to leave the completion tone on repeat. It's going to bug you, but then you're going to come over and disconnect the battery. You can change the language between English, Chinese, probably Japanese, Deutsch, French, and Espanol. This is actually the same settings menu that all the other ISDT charger has. So if you have another ISDT, charger you're gonna feel pretty familiar with that firmware sharing you have to connect the USB cable which is proprietary and you have to buy it separately it doesn't come in this kit it cost I think ten dollars maybe something like that and then you will be able to upgrade the firmware system self-checking so luckily we don't have any errors and then we can go back let's connect the battery and see all the other settings so if you connect the battery without the balance lead, you're gonna see just the voltage. And once you connect the balance lead, you can see this is a 4S battery and the cells are ranged between 3.76 to 3.77 volts. Let's choose the second module. Then we can see the voltage of each cell. And if we scroll down, you can see the total voltage of the battery 
we can see the temperature. Over here, we can see the number of pieces that we charge daily. And this is the total number of pieces we charge monthly or either in general, I'm not sure. And the manual doesn't say anything about it. I assume it's the total batteries that you charged. In order to start the charging process, first you have to select the channel. Then we'll set it on 1.3 ampere. This is a 1300 milliampere hour battery. And we can start the task. Now we can see it's charging. You can see here on the left the ampere it's being charged with. The total milliampere hour, you can see the current voltage of the battery and the voltage range of the cells. While we are charging, you can also see the resistance of each cell and it had to gather some data and now it's displaying it. You can see the milliohm of every cell separately, one, two, three, and four. If you want to stop the charging process, you can just press once the dial and just stop it or you can also change the ampere. And if you long press the dial while charging, it will just stop everything automatically. Now I'm going to connect another battery. This is a 1300 LIHV battery. So if we want to charge it, we have to press one. Now I'm going to set it on LIHV and I'm going to supply it with 1.3 ampere and just start the task. Now both batteries are being charged. The one on the left is an LIHV and the other one is a LiPo Forest battery. Now there are some flaws with this charger. For example, if I'm using the module one, and now I'm setting it on LIHV and I'm starting the task. Now I'm going to move to module two. You can see that now the battery type is also set to LIHV. So it doesn't remember the last setting. And then I have to set it again on LiPo and start the task. So it's going to charge two types of batteries simultaneously, but it will remember the last settings that you used from the other module. So they share the same settings and it's pretty surprising because ICT have done an excellent job designing this charger and it is surprising that there are some bugs in the software. Maybe they are going to fix it on one of the next updates, but I think that they should include this adapter or maybe just use a regular USB port, micro USB port, because using this proprietary port is not that great and it damages the user experience of this product. The USB port doesn't have any settings. So if you would like to charge your device, just connect the USB port and then you can connect your device and it will be charged on two amperes using five volts. In terms of cost, this is not a cheap charger, but it's not that expensive if you take it into consideration that there are two models inside and also there is a built-in power supply. So if you buy a power supply for about $15, then you have to buy two more chargers for about $60, $70. It gets to around $80 or maybe $70. So you have to pay another $50 and you're getting an all-in-one solution. Is it worth it or not? You have to decide for yourself if you are willing to spend over $100 for a charger. Of course, you can also use parallel boards and you can charge probably more than eight batteries because 12 amperes and 200 volts are plenty of power and charging eight batteries on the same time, not going to be a hard task for this charger. However, I don't really like parallel charging and I don't have 12 batteries. I have maybe six, seven batteries. So charging the batteries using the built-in modules are going to be enough for me. If you're looking to charge batteries that don't have an XT60 connector, you can make your own adapter. This charger doesn't come with any of them. So for example, I've made this adapter for an XT30 connector, and this one is for a GST, and this one is for a 1S battery. So you can connect it and charge a 1S or 2S battery that has this kind, this type of connector. Overall, I think that if ISTT can lower a bit the price, maybe to a range of $100, make a bigger screen with a touch display, have an upgrade port, like a micro USB port to upgrade the firmware, probably they had the best charger in the market and they will just take over it. However, in this price point and having some flows with the dial and the firmware, I would give it about seven out of 10, maybe eight. And time will tell if it's not going to break. So far, I've been very happy with ISDT products and hopefully I will be happy also with this one. So I thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it was informative enough. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.